Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. And guess what? I'm finally doing the video that I promised you almost in every haul that I've been doing lately. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Merry Christmas. But the 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 thing is, is that I wanted to wait until my final appointment with the doctor. Actually, I should have said that. And we had that final appointment yesterday. Yes. Um, at 10 a.m. with my gastrologist. And um, so I wanted to go through a timeline and just tell you. I was hoping you would do that. Uh, <laughs> I was like, because it's all been a blur. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a lot. In the last three months. Has it been three months? Yeah, it, the the call came on October the fourth. That's why I'm tired. Okay, I get it. And <laughs> and yesterday was December the sixth. So three months. Three months that we have been going through through this, and and we we went through the valley. Which is the key. That's the key, and you know we've been talking about our anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary again. And we had our 35th um, wedding anniversary on Monday. And people always look at 35 years. How did you do it? This uh, is a snippet married. of, of what, how we've done it. Just stay married. <laughs> Just stay married. <laughs> be mad, be frustrated, get over it, stay married. And just do it. Like Nike says, just, just, just do it. Just flicking, freaking do it. <laughs> and... <clears throat> I wanted to go through because I'm I, like I said I made a timeline of of the events from October the fourth up until December the sixth. This has been our life, and um, and God has brought us through it. And the first thing we want to give honor to is Amen. is is Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, God, all three. Without that, I we. I don't know how people make it through serious issues and illness and all the things that that life can bring. That's how we made it 35 years. And and, and I know that there are a lot of people who are, who are watching you guys are Christians and you hear this all the time. You hear people that say they believe in that they believe in God. That's really only half of it. You have to believe what God said. You have to believe God. Not just believe in God. You have to believe God. You you may believe in me because you see me, you know me, but do you believe me? And that's really that's the important where part. the faith comes in. Do you believe? You gotta have the faith, and and I'm not gonna make it seem like we were perfect in this and, and knowing and trusting. Because we're humans. Yeah, because there was a little bit of fear, especially on October the fourth when I got this phone call. All those people back. We I, I we. We keep up with our medical things, you know, the testing and different things like that. It was time for the mammogram and time for the the colon test. Yeah, Cologuard. <laughs> a lot of you have received that <coughs> the white box on your doorstep mm -hmm. uh, because now they do that first as a screening method, which isn't necessarily so bad. I've had one. This was your second one, actually, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it always came back just fine, you know. And this time, you know, the, the box came. I put it down. First, it sits usually on the dining room table for a while. Then we move it to the bedroom. Which is nice that the, that the poop box sits on your dining room table. <laughs> no poop in it at that time. You, you can't eat it air by the time. That's true. But there was no poop in it. That's very true. That's it very was true. just the box. And because as soon as you do that, you got to ship it off. So I did uh, it, it after a week. I did the test and shipped it off. You know, the the thing that I have always had problems with is my mammograms, and I made the mammogram appointment, and it was due the day the hurricane came in to Florida. So that got canceled and moved moved to another week. But um, did had to do the mammogram and the cologuard. Did the cologuard, shipped it off, you know, and you you go on with life. And then um, with his, he got a letter and it said in the letter. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Actually, I got an email and they said in the, they said in the email that um, that it was normal, whatever normal is, but 
Uh, and um, if there was anything else, I'd be hearing from my doctor, and mm -hmm. I didn't, but it was because, because it was normal. Mm -hmm. um, so well, I, then I got my letter, um, and I think it was on the third. We were sitting here talking, and he handed it to me. My letter didn't say you got a letter. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't get a letter. I got a letter, and it said um, your doctor will be contacting you for the results on your your colagogram. So I got got a phone call the next day from, and this was just like one of the it's CNAs in the doctor's office or something like that, and she said that we got your Cologar back and it was positive for cancer, and you need to uh, we need to send you a referral and send you to a gastrologist, and so stop. When you get a phone call that says, "Oh, you have cancer," now I'm sorry. I don't. I know a lot of y'all super religious, super spiritual. I know, hand to God all the time. But when you get a phone call that says, "Oh, by the way, you have cancer," in a sort of a matter of fact way, "Oh, we're sure you have cancer." If the inside of your your body doesn't do this. A little bit, you lie. You are lying. Mm -hmm. So, so when you get the bad report, and how you how you react to it initially inside is not necessarily meaning that you don't have any faith. It doesn't mean that you have lost all your religion and 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 that you are carnal in any way. It's just the human it's side of you. Human coming side out. of you coming out. <clears throat> No, I want you to do that. And so I took, this was, like I said, she's one of the assistants in the office. So I said, can a doctor call me and explain this to me? Because, you know, I just, I, I'm, this is important. And so uh, later on that day, the the nurse practitioner, I guess, mm -hmm. the, the, the almost doctor, called me and she said that um uh yes we um uh, we we need you to come and pick up the referral because we want you to get to a gastrologist as soon as possible and so i said so you're saying that i have the c word yeah. and, and uh and she said yes did you had some positive cells that in there that you know are cancerous and so i said okay so I'm here by myself at home on my lunch break, and so that was a Thursday, wasn't it? Yes. I don't remember. Because I, it was a Thursday because I came. And um, so immediately I called my husband and asked him if he could go by the doctor's office and pick up the referral because they want me to get to a doctor, you know, as soon as possible. And so. He could tell in my voice, I'm sure, that I was very upset. And so he came home and, you know, and then the next day he picked up the referral and all of this. And I called to make my appointment and everything. And I had a week coming up that I was going to be off and I was going to go visit my sister. But now I need to go and take care of this medical issue. So... Talked to the uh, gastrologist doctor, and, and they they set up an appointment. My appointment isn't until the seventeenth. So it's like a month. Almost no, no. A, well, well, well. It seems this like, is for the first appointment. Okay, so that and was your for uh, for the doctor's visit. Yes. And so that was like two weeks. Two weeks before they could get me in for that. So we go, uh, we get that appointment and the waiting and the waiting and the waiting. So, of course, I, I talked to my pastor and my pastor's wife and, uh, and, and asked, we only told certain people that would believe with us. And this is the key. This is the key, especially for all your hyper-religious people. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm picking on y'all a little bit this morning. Uh, don't let everybody know. When you guys when you got something going on in your life that you need prayer for, only tell people who will pray. Who are true believers. Only tell people who are going to pray and pray the right thing. Do not make a general announcement. Do not open your door and tell everybody that you see. 
Do not do that. Only let people know we're going to pray and pray the right thing. Too often, we in our emotion, we let everybody know and we spill it. And, and then what you get back from a lot of people is, oh, yeah, you know, you know, my cousin's sister's neighbor's brother had the same thing. And he died. Yes. And that's the last thing you need. You don't need people with negative words that's the last being spoke thing you over need. you. That's the last thing you, you need. You need people who going to, and, and that's what these people did. They gave me some scriptures that, you know, I'm already familiar with, but they reminded me of. They told me different things and, you know, things that, you know, God is a healer and he will, you know, we're believing with you. These people really believe. And, and and during that time, we were speaking the same thing over my, over my body that, you know, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And what am I doing today? I'm declaring the works of the Lord. So, so that's just me in, in intervening here in the timeline. Make sure, make sure when you're going through something, don't let everybody know. Remember the story of David, right? Had the dream. Let everybody know. Joseph. Joseph. And the Technicolor yes. coat, yeah. Yes. Guess what happened? He sold his butt into slavery, right? He, he had to go through something. He had to go through something. Maybe before he got his. And I always think, I think can't make pastor. What if he was able to keep his mouth shut? What would have happened? I, I'm guessing God would have done the same, the same thing because that was that he was destined to that. But would he have had to go through all of that if he was able to? Because Joseph was a little immature, and he, he didn't couldn't wait to tell everybody th th that he didn't need to tell everybody. You don't need to tell everybody about everybody, everything. <laughs> and even he was the favorite of his father, and even his father was like, "What are you saying? You gonna rule over us? What is up with you, Joseph?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, "Go wait in the car." Yeah, <laughs> go wait in the car. Yeah. So, so be really careful. Just be careful who you who, share who your you share your, your dreams and your your. And your tribulations, tribulations with. with because some people are not always on your side but um then on the 17th we went to the gastrologist and the and in in the appointment they go they went over you know are you having any symptoms are you doing this and, and what's going on and but they wanted to know how urgent this is but um I, I pretty much had said that I'm pretty sure they're going to want to do a colonoscopy. And that was what they needed to do was do a colonoscopy and, um, and come and, you know, from that, then they can know what, what are we truly dealing with. And again, I told, told my husband and I told my pastor, I said, I truly don't want to give any details until I know what we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. Um, so that nothing is spoken <laughs> that isn't going to be negative. So on the 17th of October, they could not, and because, and this is something that, that medical people always bring up, because of my weight, they were going to have to do this in the hospital. I couldn't have it done in a surgery center, you know. I don't think they could do it in your surgery center because they did mine in a surgery center. And I am not, you know, I'm not as slim as I was in 1982. I'll just put it that way. Um, yeah, I think they just had some sort of janky. K it's just that, do that particular doctor. Sort of k -tel, um center going on there. But they had to do it in the hospital. So we, so we had to go to the hospital. So, and they could not make an appointment until November the 17th. That's, that's, where, the that's where the month comes in that you were thinking. So we had another month. A month. Of, to go through and and you know I complained about it in the beginning but now that I look back on it you know that was God he was saying you need to prepare for this you know get ready get ready you know we will so so that month that month between having the colonoscopy and before I had the colonoscopy and and knowing you know any full details we got prayed up Talk about fasting and praying and believing and, you know, my God, my God. So, so, so this is what you do. You, you have that time and then you just don't sit there in your negativity and your thoughts and, and your fear. You don't. 
you do get played up, which means you you put on the whole armor. You do you do what you know to do. This is when you get to believe. You get to believe God, not just believe put in God. Put your faith in action. You get to believe, and, you know, because that's what you get to do. And we got a whole month to do that. And I just want to say, you know, uh, to, uh, like a month before this happened, Pastor did a, a sermon on meditation and meditating on the Word of God. And and I got confirmation that this was all from God, from me and my sister talking, because she's going through a little bit right now herself. And God revealed to us about the 23rd Psalms. And, you know, from a baby, my parents taught me, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little more emotional, but they taught me the 23rd Psalm. And, how, and I, there's no way I could have known back when they were teaching me this mm -hmm. and I had to memorize it, that I would be using this 23rd Psalm to save my life. And, and I meditated on the 23rd Psalm and Psalms 91 also. There were a lot of scriptures that I, I would quote, but meditation on the 23rd Psalm is what got me got me through most of it because you we take it for granted and most most everybody can quote the 23rd psalms or at least the earliest piece of it or at least some of it but um i broke it down you know daily and read and, and just chewed on it and and how it opened up to me it it just it just ministered to me so much in and um he leads me beside quiet waters he refreshes my soul he refreshed me during this time he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake and even though i walk through he was taking us through a valley we're not going to stay there in that in that valley but no nope. But but you he helped us through it. The darkest valley, through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even though <laughs> the morning when we woke up and it was time for the colonoscopy, and, and if you've had a colonoscopy, the prep is worse than <laughs> than <laughs> than the, the whole thing. The prep is the thing, ain't it? The For those prep. who had it, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you had it. Because the prep is Ooh. the one. So it was a, a tough evening for me. If you live through the prep, you're probably going to be okay. Yes. <laughs> so went through the prep, and we woke up that morning, and we looked over at each other, and, and he said, how you doing? And I said, I'm good. I, I don't have any fear. I don't have any anything negative right now i'm ready let's go so he comforted me he prepares the table before you in the presence of your enemy and the enemy is fear and the thought of cancer and all that that in fear and doubt and uh, and, and worry and all the things and and, and deception and all the things the enemy will put on you. And, and it's only there for one reason. It's there to steal the word. It's there to steal your joy, your, joy and your comfort. Um, and it is the battle that most of us face, quite frankly, in most things. Um, you mentioned um, pastor's message on meditation. Uh, I think right before that, um, Pastor Mercer was out of town. Mm -hmm. And I got it. And I, I, I occasionally, please don't call me pastor. Don't do that, because I know what that job is. And thank you, no. Um, I get a chance to speak um, when pastor's not there. And the thing that, and, and you know, it's easy when you're, when you, when you come in one time or two times a year, <laughs> you come with your best stuff, right? So my thing is fear. And I taught on fear. And, and, and little did I know that I wasn't ministering to the people who were sitting in the chairs. I was ministering to myself. Uh, I, I studied to myself because I was, because God had prepared me and all of us that we need to understand what fear is and there isn't any reason to it tells us 365 times in the word of god 
Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Um, so it's so it's, a, it's 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 a constant theme throughout the entire, uh, you know, the entire scriptures. Um, that it's amazing that in a moment, in a phone call, that, that can evaporate. And so it took a, it took a long time for us to get that back. So we, so now we are here in the house, and it's time to go. And of course, you know, going to the going to a hospital is a thing. Uh, yes, it's a thing. We gotta, you know, it's 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 a thing. Uh, but the check in was fairly easy, I guess. And the people there at uh, Banner Regional, you know what? Sometimes I'll get a bad, I'll get a bad rap, but you do a good job. They were excellent. The, the times that we have been there, good. you got you guys have been awesome. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple of surgeries at that hospital, and it's all been smooth. So. It, did a good job. Yes, they did a good job. So we're here at November the 17th, ready to go for the the, the, the procedure. And um I I'm I always I told my husband yesterday, I said, you know my doctor, he has a uh Dr. S is what they call him because it's a weird name. But he the Indian. <laughs> yeah. You got a name this long and there are no vowels in it. Just <laughs> but, consonants and punctuation but right? he has a great bedside humor and um right before they were going to put me under he looks at me and said so you did the col cola guard trying to get out of this huh <laughs> well and it came back positive so now we have to <laughs> we have to go through this so um that everyone in the room were kept me calm but what was i saying the whole time as they wheeled me in and we the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> 23rd Psalms. It was comforting me. And I was at peace. And um, so, of course, they put you out and everything. And, and I wait to the nurse. And she says, your husband's coming in. And I was a little loopy and everything. A lot loopy. Not, 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 I, I'm not going to share that with you. But the, the, just believe me. Super loopy. Can you imagine super loopy? Super and, loopy. And so we waited for the... Propofol is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Propofol is serious. Is a hell of a drug. <laughs> but um, had the happy juice and was back and doing it in, you know, in the recovery room. And the first thing that the nurse asked you, what would you like to eat? I'm like, huh? eat? <laughs> eat. <laughs> want to know what's going on. <laughs> Would you like a sandwich, some orange juice, and then I'm like, N -n 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 whatever, you know, I tell <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so the doctor's going to be in shortly and go over what, what the, the exam was and what, you know, different things like that. So they all see, it's just like, everybody is so cheery and happy and, you know, going on and I want to know what's going on in my body, you know? So, um, we waited, what, maybe about 20, 30 minutes? No, Cause no. he was, yeah, because he was in a, no, he, doing another procedure. He was doing, a, he was doing his last uh, colonoscopy the other day. And when I saw them roll that patient past our area, and it was just then a few minutes before. Yeah, because he, he was keeping up with the charts and who was in where. And because all this. Cause what, cause what else? Cause, cause dudes, guys, what else do you have to do? You're looking at the thing. You're, I mean, you're trying. Because what you can't do is you can't go up to the nurse's station and start banging on the desk. Well, that doesn't work. So what else do you do? You have to keep your, your mind occupied, right? So uh, he knew who was in surgery, who was out. Yes. When the next thing in the yes. human mind was scheduled and yes. all of that. <laughs> Because yes. they have that up in the in the yes. procedure rooms. Yes, they have a schedule of activities there, and you are and you are tuned in, aren't you? Uh, so when I knew that the lady that he was in his last in, in his last one for the day, because it was getting late in the day, and it was like mm -hmm. three thirty, four o'clock like that, and um, I knew that he would be in soon. And at about fifteen minutes after his last procedure, um, then he came in, mm -hmm. and he's. <laughs> And, he, and, and and you're right. He was just he was just really chill, uh, which was really really important. Very uh, comforting. And mm -hmm. and um, 
told us that um, Debbie was fine, and um, they they took a thing out and they were going to look at it and a polyp. They a had, polyp. They found a polyp in that. Which is not super on folks. This is not medical information, but this is super not uncommon. This is ext extremely common Most people for people at our and, age. You know what? At our you know have polyps and have and they need as to many be pages on the calendar as we have uh yeah so it's so it is so, so it's not uncommon and the and they would do a biopsy on it and then he said something that was super comforting me he said even if it comes back bad it doesn't matter because you don't have it anymore <laughs> and he was very very matter-of-factly about it but in a sense that gave me comfort because he wasn't speaking medical ease to me um, and he was talking to me in a language that, that I could understand, and that and that and that all made sense. That, that, that all made sense to me. And the, and the dietitis was that is a, a mild case of <clears throat> dietitis in in I don't, my. I don't, I don't think that's the word, but y'all get it. Don't don't Google it though. <laughs> we got information not to Google it, so don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, but those things... Little that, pockets in your colon you is go. what it is. Little pockets that form in your colon, which are like wrinkles. And, you know, we get wrinkles over the years. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Maybe because we don't get wrinkles here, we get wrinkles here. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, but uh, that 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 was found, and, um, and, and hemorrhoids, which get aggravated because of... The, the procedure, prep. the prep, the prep will tear you up. <laughs> so, right. So those are very minor things, and he gave me a positive thing, but they still have to test the tissues and all that stuff for it to come back. So that's why I wanted to to make to wait until tomorrow, till yesterday, until I get to meet with him for the final meeting and go over everything that happened, and. Yesterday's uh, appointment went very well. He said that they got back all of the information like on Monday. Um, it takes a while for them because they like to dissect and resect and do everything to make sure. And <clears throat> the the positive thing is that there are no cancerous cell, no precancerous, no any sign of cancer that they were able to find. Nothing. And praise God. You know, it's one thing. It's almost one thing to to know because, frankly, we knew, mm -hmm. but to get confirmation is important. Um, you know, when 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 Jesus healed the, healed the lepers, he knew they were healed. Of course, he knew. What did he tell them to do? Go show yourself to the priest. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't for 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 Christ's confirmation. That was confirmation for the lepers. For them. So they could see. Okay, so I am really, I am, I am really healed. So uh, it's nice. To, it, 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 it was great to get confirmation. Uh, but if I can, um, one of the things when we got back from the um, the colonoscopy, please, please, uh, please. Um, I got the the thought that you know it didn't matter what the results were. If the results were the exact opposite, we were ready. God we, had prepared We were us ready for a battle. whatever. We were ready. We were and I think armored up. We were ready to go. No, no matter what it was. And I think that that really was, was, if there was an exciting part to it, no matter what the results were, we were ready. And I think that that's really where God wants us. God wants us to be ready. Because there may be a battle. There may be. And the idea is, are you ready for it? Are you ready to get into the battle? Because sometimes that's all you have to be. Every time the Israelites had to go into battle, they were ready. And sometimes God said, no, nah, this is my battle, I got it. But he wanted them to be ready still. He wanted them to be prepared. Be prepared. All the whatever. time. Whatever. Whatever. In any circumstance. Every circumstance. Mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, all spiritually, of it. be ready. Don't get caught. And in this days of time, dear Lord, people, 
people are dropping off of this earth like crazy. I mean, every time you turn around, and I mean, even here this year, we have lost so many people that were close to us. And you never know the day nor the hour. So this is not no time to be playing around, playing church and, you know, well, I might go this Sunday. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Yes. Those are the most annoying people in the world, by, by the way. <laughs> but I don't want to make it seem like we are perfect people. Not at all. Because we're, we're not. And... You know, you make so many bargains with the Lord, you know. If you would just let me get through this, God, get my light bill paid this month. I saw, I promise. I know y'all laughing, but y'all know I'm not lying, right? And then the next week, once you done made it through, you ready to go right back to what you were doing. You're going back to the club this week, and you're going back to the casino next weekend. I know. I know. I, know. I, 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 I understand. But the idea is to be prepared. Be prepared all the time. Be ready in season or out of season. Pray without season. I don't think any of this is very complicated because that's not how my brain works. So when pastor says to me, uh, we're going to be out of town next week, can you do, the answer is always a yes. The, the answer is never, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm not ready. The answer is always yes. Be ready all the time. And the best part about any of this is that we found out that we were ready. Because when I got the results back from my mammogram this year, you know, they just sent a letter and said, no, no. Uh, it, looks, it, looks like, it looks like the last time we saw them. <laughs> yeah. Basically, like the last time we saw so them. So the girls are healthy. Everybody, <laughs> go, go on about your business. <laughs> and when I got that, that was within the midst of waiting to go do the colonoscopy. So I looked at him and I said, and I'm believing that that's what's going to happen with this, with this. That's exactly what happened. And that's what happened. Even more so. Even more so, really. Um, so listen, if you're going through something and everybody, and, 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 and what everybody we know does. now, everybody's going through something. Everybody is going through something. Um, if we can offer any, you know, any encouragement to you. Uh, just write, just write down in the comment section or um, hit Debbie up on on Instagram because uh, you know you guys if you follow us here and you follow us on Instagram. Uh, let us know. And Facebook. And Facebook, so we can pray for you. We can pray with you. Uh, we want to be those kind of people that. If you're going through something, you can let us know, and we'll and, you know, and we'll believe for you because we're going to believe for the very best. But we've seen personally more than once at this table what God can do, and what He because He'll do what He said He'll He'll do what He said He's going to do. It's don't make it hard. He will do exactly what He said He was going to do. And and I do intercessory prayer, so I have a. a a prayer, uh, a prayer box that I take. If, if you want your name in that prayer box, prayer box never lies. It never lies. <laughs> I take three names out weekly, and it's always people that that, that need prayer. You find I out. find out that later week something was going something on was with going that person. On. It's really, it really freaked me out when it first started happening because I would pull the names out and stuff like that, and then like. Uh, the next week, well, actually, I pulled my own name out the week of October the 4th. There you go. My own name came out that of that, and I was thinking the whole time, well, it's got to be the mammogram thing, you know, it's, it, so I got to pray harder and believe for that, you know, with the, the mammogram. My own name came out of the prayer box, and then I think a few a weeks later during that time, Willie's name came out of the prayer box. And so when when I put that name, when I pull a name out of the prayer box and I pray for that person that week, it's really shown proof. I've had some of my coworkers' names that I've pulled out and find out that they were they were going through something. And they'll either eat I am me and say, you know, can you believe for me for this or whatever? Already on it. <laughs> and so I, you know, God is so good 
And and I'm not building myself up by saying that I'm an intercessory prayer and that I, you know, doing all of this, but I'm building him up. We just want to make sure that you guys know that if there's something going on, there, and, and you feel that you don't have anybody in your in your in your personal circle to turn to, you do. We'd like to be that. We like to be those people, um, not just to get into your business because I don't want to get into people's business because <laughs> some of y'all got all sorts of stuff going on that I don't want, I, that I don't need to know about. Um, but if you need, but if you believe that you need prayer for something, please feel you know feel comfortable contacting us. And of course, uh, we wouldn't. We ain't gonna put it on. We ain't gonna put it on the Facebook, and we're not gonna put it on the gram. Uh, we're not gonna. We're use gonna you. put it in. We're gonna put you in the, the word. prayer word. We're gonna put you in the word. And and um, sometimes people will come up in my dreams or whatever like that, and I will pray for them. You know, things that that going on in their lives or whatever like that. It just comes up in me, and God has given me this gift. And I don't take it for granted. And I think that was one of the wake-up calls that I got for this. Because we have a, a prayer group at our church that pray uh, every Wednesday evening. We have an hour prayer on a Zoom call. It used to be in person, but now it's on a Zoom call. And I wasn't attentive to that like I should have been. And I had to repent and ask God to, to forgive me for not t attending that meeting. And that, you know, if, you know, again, the promises, I promise that if you just help me through this, Lord, I will be obedient to, to, to being a part of that prayer group. So. Well, that's the story. Like, um, like Walter Cronkite used to say, and that's the story. <laughs> so now you know. And that's story. the way it is. That's the way it is. So now you know the whole story. Again, thank you ever, ever so much for uh, spending some time with us this morning. And this may have gone very long, but it, it was that, worth it. It wasn't that long, I don't think. Okay. It's only six hours. <laughs> it's only six hours. We're, we're good. Six or seven hours. Y'all can watch it over time. Remember to watch our Christmas Tree Chronicles. Christmas Tree Chronicles on our shorts. Um, so you can figure out where this came from. I don't know where that came from. Debbie knows where that came from. Yes. I don't have any earthly idea. It just showed up on the tree. I think it flew in here. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. There's another. Is this another Bush Garden tournament? Yes, it is. Just chase. Okay. All right, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. Again, until we see you again, go out there and learn something, learn something for somebody. And for goodness sake, take care of yourself and remember this. And never forget, we love you. And there's, there's nothing, nothing you can, can do, do about, about it. it. We'll see you.